In today's Hopefully Quake video, I want to take this opportunity to do a very simple demonstration on a few Zigbee powered rotary knobs that can be used with Home Assistant to control lighting. This is just a basic lamp. I've taken it apart. I have used a different LED strip that's RGB, CW, whatever. It's super bright, takes a lot of power, makes this lamp much more useful. So that is what is currently in there. The controller that you see right here, it takes multiple inputs. It's able to power all of these LEDs without any kind of power limitations. So this is kind of the perfect little testing setup thing because it does the colors, does the fading, etc. So let me introduce you to some of the knobs that I'm going to be looking at today. That's the IKEA knob. This is a knob by uh, Ear, Ear U, and this is another knob by Ear U. Uh, this is actually a little modification right here. You might not be able to tell from the angle, but I did put pieces of tape on that. I will talk about that later. It doesn't exactly look like that. But these are the three primary knobs that I've been using, testing, and I have some thoughts that I would like to share. Also, even though I am using this light to demonstrate everything, it's not necessarily the easiest way to tell if it's working. So I went ahead and loaded up Home Assistant on my phone with this light so we could see the changes in real time. Hopefully, if it's more responsive, it'll show it here better. Now keep in mind, this is a very quick overview of turning lights on and off and then changing the brightness of said lights. In previous videos, I've taken this knob right here, done a ton of custom scripting to be able to change modes that would allow me to change RGB colors, brightness of the colors, temperatures, etc. But that is not going to be part of this video. This is simply just talking about the responsiveness of the separate knobs that I purchased for testing. To get this started, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to talk about the knob that I am the most familiar with, this one. As a rotary knob, its key functions are to rotate it to the right, to turn the light up, or to rotate it to the left in order to turn the light down. And since it has the option to be pressed, that means you can also utilize that to turn the light completely off or, of course, turn the light right back on. So it's those basic functionalities of being able to control the brightness and the on and off of lights that attracted me to these rotary devices. This white one actually made by the same company. I said I'd mention these little black things right here. These are actually pieces of tape because on the device itself, it does not have very much traction. So I found myself slipping every time I was trying to use it and I really just didn't like that. So I added a little bit of traction, especially just to demonstrate this in the video. But exactly like this previous knob, if you rotate it over to the right, it will turn the light up. If you rotate it to the left, it will turn the light down. And once again, it has the option to click it and it will turn the light off. Or if you click it again, it will turn the light on. Now, I think you have a pretty good idea of what these knobs are supposed to do by now, but they are definitely different in their own little way. This is made by Ikea. I think it's specifically for volume control, but I could be wrong on that. It has this little divot right here. It has this as a base. It's a little, it's definitely easier to rotate than this is, but you turn it up, let's say to the right, it'll turn that light up. Or if you turn it down, it'll turn it down. And just like the others, you can push it in and that will turn the light off, push it in again, that'll turn the light on. Now, something to keep in mind is that everything that you see here, as far as the lights going up or down or being turned on and off, this is everything that I put into Home Assistant as actions that react to whether or not it's spinning or being pressed. So because it is Home Assistant, the option to customize everything for your exact needs are almost endless. So now let's talk about some of my thoughts and experience with this knob again made by a company i can't really pronounce very well this is the one i've used the most i have multiple of these in my house and i think i prefer this over everything for a few different reasons so no reason not to start off with this one even though it is my favorite it still has a few quirks with it that make it just not a perfect rotary device Starting off with the things that I like and some of the features that are built into this is that it does have the option to click, obviously, but you can also double click. This one doesn't have anything programmed for a double click, but just in case you want to turn off multiple lights or do something else with the double click, this one does give you that option. 
And the next thing I want to talk about is actually for me, kind of a pro and a con. Uh, it's a pro because I figured it out. I've done a bunch of custom scripting to make it work better. But the way this registers in Zigbee and it actually sends the commands to Home Assistant is a little bit more complicated. To give you a very rough idea, whenever you rotate this, it's going to send a couple different things over to Home Assistant. One is going to be the direction, so whether or not you're rotating it right or left. The second one is going to be a step size, meaning how many clicks did you rotate it? And then after that, it's going to be the transition time, which is how fast did you rotate it? Now, all of that comes through in raw data and the script that I use utilize some math in order to just say, hey, was it rotated fast? Do a little bit of math to turn the lights up or down quicker, you know, et cetera. It's kind of complicated. I made a video about it, but uh, it's just one of those things that it provides a lot more information that you're going to have to spend more time in order to tweak to make this thing really work for what you want it to do. In this particular demo, I had a very, very simple setup to where when I rotate it slowly, it increases the light by 10%, or if I rotate it quickly, it does it by 20%. It's not as reliable as the script that I created for it, so that's why I say this is a pro and con. If you really wanna spend some time with it, you can make this thing a pretty good device if you have all the custom scripting. If you just wanna put it into Home Assistant and use some of the basics with it, then you might find yourself having a few issues. Now there is a real downside with this and it actually, a lot of the other buttons have pretty similar ones, but it goes into a sleep mode. It's a power saving mode. So it doesn't always respond to the first thing that you do, especially like a click to turn a light on and off because it's in sort of a power saving mode. It has to wake up, reconnect to the Zigbee network and then just say, hey, I'm online. It is definitely kind of an annoying thing, but I've kind of trained myself to click it. If it doesn't come on, click it again. Overall, this is still my favorite rotary knob. Well, this ad makes just about as much sense as browsing the internet without NordVPN. With tons of servers, fast speeds, and with my link in the description, a huge discount, it's a little illogical to not run NordVPN. If you don't believe me, check it out for yourself. They're so confident you'll like it that you get a 30-day money-back guarantee. Make sure to click my NordVPN link in the description down below to get your discount today. Now that moves me over to this one. This is absolutely my least favorite rotary knob. I don't like how it works. The base, which you don't see here, is not very sturdy. It's magnetic. It has really nothing that locks it into place. The knob is hard to turn, so you have to modify it. Uh, it doesn't necessarily stay connected very often, especially if you just happen to ignore it for a little bit. It'll go offline. You got to restart it. Uh, sometimes I've had to go back and take the battery out, put the battery back in just to get it to reconnect to the Zigbee network. And then when it comes to reliability, sometimes it works perfectly fine. Like as you can see right here, not too bad but then sometimes it just seems like it doesn't work at all. It does have the exact same amount of data sent to Home Assistant that this knob does because it's made by the same company, but the physical design of this is more of an annoyance. It's cumbersome to use. And again, something with the connectivity thing, I just, I don't find myself using this at all. Like with this one, if I press the button and it doesn't work, I press the button again and it works. With this one, if I push the button and it doesn't work, I push it again, it doesn't work. I reset, the button doesn't work, and I just I give up. So I've put this in a drawer and I have essentially given up on this completely. Now I do still appreciate the options that it has, that this one has, like a single and a double click. It has different speeds. Uh, you can program it to be a little bit more accurate if you have the scripts and stuff, if you want to control lights. So I do recognize the same qualities of this one and I do appreciate it for what it has, but just because of the connectivity issues and losing connectivity and having to like take the battery out and put it back in or whatever, uh, even though it has some of the same features, it just it absolutely is not on the same level as that one is. So with these two out of the way, because they're same company, different design, this one's better, this one's not, that brings me to the IKEA. Now, I got this because I have to be honest, I love the way it looks. It's slick, it's got a nice little grab right here that allows you to put your finger in there and rotate it. It is super smooth. 
I just, I love everything about the design of this knob. I was highly impressed. But it wasn't until after I purchased it, try to use it as a daily driver for a few different things, that I realized that it just doesn't perform as well. It doesn't have the same options. It doesn't send as much data. And overall, it just severely lacks behind these other rotary knobs that I'm used to messing around with. I did mention that this is kind of sort of meant for a volume button, not necessarily like a light control button. So I do acknowledge that I'm using it outside of its own element. But my biggest gripe with this is that when you rotate it, it doesn't have a speed. It has a rotate, but you can't just whip it faster or anything like that and have it turn things up faster or turn things low faster. It's just one speed. So that's not necessarily bad because it does seem to be fairly reliable when it comes to rotating it, as long as you maintain that speed as a, a good, decent speed. But in the off chance you're trying to go into a room and quickly turn on a light and rotate something faster, you're just not going to get that option with this. It does have a plus side though, and that is the clicks. So they all click. In fact, these two have double clicks, but this one actually has a triple click. I can push it once and I can turn off the lights, push it again and I can turn the lights back on, but I could also program a double click and a triple click to do all sorts of things, whether it's controlling different lights or, I mean, it's home assistant. You can do whatever you want with that. And because it turns so smoothly, as in like when you rotate these, it actually has like, it seems like it's going over little bumps. This one doesn't have any of those bumps. So because it rotates so smoothly, it just, it just has a very nice, smooth reaction. It's easy to trigger. I, I, like I said, I love the design. I love the implementation of it. I just wish that it had a speed factor information that it would send over to Home Assistant. And I think this would probably make this my bet, my favorite rotary knob. So as I mentioned before, I did get all these knobs to test them out just to find out which one I would like the best. I like this one. This is my favorite one. It has a few things where you gotta double click or whatever, but this one has been the most reliable. It has been the most useful, and it's something that I've actually purchased multiple of them in order to control multiple different lights. In fact, I programmed a script to make it to where when I click this button, it will change modes. So I could change the color, then I can change the temperature, I can change the brightness, or I can turn it off. So that's all part of my custom scripting for this. So maybe that's why I like it because I already have that script made for it. But overall, this is absolutely my favorite. This one, on the other hand, I'm gonna throw in a drawer, probably forget it exists, and sometime in like five years, go through that drawer, realize it's still there, and throw it away, because I, I just, this thing sucks, it's terrible. And since I like the design of this knob, I like the smoothness of this knob, even though I haven't found an exact use case or where I wanna use this uh, specifically, I do think I wanna use this, I do really like it, I think it's useful, it's very responsive, and this is a, this is a close second. I don't have an exact use for it right now, but I do like how reliable and how responsive this rotary is. So before I close out this video, I wanna say one thing that every single one of these knobs have in common. And I definitely think it's something that everybody should know if they are trying to implement this into their own home assistant setup. The way that these knobs work is that when you rotate them, it doesn't send the signal to home assistant every single time you rotate it, unless of course you're rotating it very slow. For an example, if you rotate this, doesn't do anything until you stop rotating it. If you rotate it the other way, it doesn't really send a whole bunch of updates. So it'll collect the data of the speed, the notches, everything that you just did, the direction, and it will wait to send that information over to Home Assistant in order to make whatever changes that you're trying to do. Now on occasion, while you're in the middle of the rotate, it will send an update, but it's just not real time. It's not hitting it, you know, just millisecond after millisecond. And all of these are gonna act the exact same way where they're not gonna send that information over right away just because I'm gonna imagine it's probably a limitation of Zigbee. They don't wanna flood the network, even though this one seems to kind of do better usually overall. Yeah, sure, why not? Let's not work right now when I try to say that you are good. 
But I feel that is good information to have, especially if you're trying to control lights and you go up, you try to spin this and your lights aren't changing right away. And you think it's just like a regular knob where it'll just instantly change your lights. It's not like that. You kind of sort of have to train yourself to maybe rotate it a little bit, let the lights catch up. And then whenever you're done with that, you can go and rotate it again. So I will go ahead and throw links in the description to all three of these rotary knobs, just in case you're interested in maybe incorporating this into your own home assistant setup. And hopefully now that you know some of the pros and cons and the way they act and stuff like that, you can make a little bit of a better decision on which one you want to get. Like for example, not that one, but probably one of these two. I would say this because I like that one. Well, guys, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, of course, post those in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe, and have yourself a great day.